Jimmy Hoffa was like the mob in that he always tried to hedge his bets. He always wanted to make sure he was on the winning side. And he was also making sure that um, he was not a guy you wanted as your vice president because he would be constantly... In the context of the Teamsters, Dave Beck didn't want him as a... Dave Beck, you know, I, I, I don't know how much he trusted him, but if he trusted him at all, he shouldn't have trusted him because Hoffa was trying to bring Dave Beck down. Um, you know, people are so shocked when they hear organized crime figures and their associates are, are uh, government informants. Well, all of these guys are government informants if they have the opportunity. They're going to feed uh, prosecutors and law enforcement people, journalists, with information about their competition. And that's what Hoffa did. Hoffa viewed Dave Beck as competition, and so he was feeding him to the Senate Rackets Committee, <clears throat> which began its work in about February of 1957. Um, in the midst of all of this, uh, Hoffa, trying to keep tabs on what the Senate committee was doing, um, uh, was introduced to a guy named John Sychisti, who, uh, he, who Hoffa arranged or Hoffa induced to get a job with the... Um, with the Senate Rackets Committee, to, to become a lawyer with the committee, with the intent that he would be feeding him information, documents, whatever, and that, and that Chiesty would be enriched by this relationship. Well, Chiesty was an honest guy, and he went to Bobby Kennedy's people, and he said, listen, Jimmy Hoff has come to me and made me this offer. And so Hoffa, uh, you know, so they, they, wired, um, they, they wired up a situation they where... They met in front of the DuPont Circle Hotel over in DuPont Circle, and the FBI was there in DuPont Circle with their, with their surveillance equipment, and the scene was, I mean, this is as good as it gets. I mean, the documents from the clone committee, which they had been given to CST, who's now cooperating fully, he gives the documents to Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa gives him the money, and this is all memorialized on, on film, and Hoffa's indicted, charged with um, uh, um, extortion, um, and he goes on trial. Bobby Kennedy is so convinced of, of conviction, he says, I will jump off the Capitol Dome if, uh, if Jimmy Hoffa is acquitted on this. And Jimmy Hoffa had a brilliant attorney named Edward Bennett Williams, and they, I think they had an all-African-American jury and they were able to get into the, there was a, a very respected newspaper in town called um, the, um, the Daily African American or something. It was a, it was a newspaper that serviced the black community here in D.C. And um, they had a, uh, a, a, a celebration of Jimmy Hoffa in this, in this uh, newspaper. And then in the midst of the trial, Joe Lewis, who was like God, uh, walked into the courtroom in full view of the jury and, uh, and greeted uh, Jimmy Hoffa uh, with, um, with considerable uh, affection, two Detroit guys getting together. And so uh, the case was presented. Uh, John Cy Chiesty testified. The, the film was shown. And the jury goes out. And surprise, surprise, uh, Jimmy true? Hoffa gets acquitted. Jury nullification. Jury, jury nullification. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the jury comes out, and sure enough, uh, Jimmy Hoff is acquitted. Uh, and then, as a joke, I think it was Edward Bennett Williams, Hoffa's attorney, who sent a package to Bobby Kennedy. And when Bobby Kennedy opened the package, it was a parachute, just in case he made good on his, his promise to jump off the Capitol Dome if Hoffa was acquitted. So there was a lot of, talk about the degree to what you know about the, the really the personal enmity between RFK and Hoffa. And where do you think that came from? Was it the, you know, the Hoffa who saw himself as having <clears throat> himself up by his own bootstraps versus the golden boy? Then there's also the whole, you know, it's kind of never been conclusively proven was Joe Kennedy's fortune at least partially built by involvement in criminal. Do you, so talk about that or debunk that. 
So the relationship between the Kennedys and Hoffa and the mob, even, that little nexus. After Jimmy Hoffa's failure to, um, to, to place one of his stooges in uh, the heart of the, the Senate Rackets Committee investigation, uh, Bobby Kennedy uh, really, really went after Jimmy Hoffa with, um, with uh, reckless abandon, I would say. The, the hatred between these two men, and it was, you have to call it a hatred, was, was of mythical, Hold on. Start back the back. hatred, the hatred between uh, Bobby Kennedy and Jimmy Hoffa was of mythical proportions and played itself out during the hearings, during the face-to-face -face confrontations that, um, that, uh, that Kennedy and Hoffa had. Um, which have since become legendary, which have been portrayed in, in films, uh, uh, whether it was uh, the Jack Nicholson film, Hoffa, or whether it was the, it was the Sylvester Stallone film the, where he played uh, uh, a guy named Kovac in the movie called Fist, or whether it was Robert Blake in the movie Blood Feud playing Jimmy Hoffa, which is probably the best film on, on Hoffa and Bobby Kennedy and what was going on. Um, uh, it, 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 it is of legendary proportions, this, this battle between Jimmy Hoffa and Bob Kennedy, which played itself out past the life of the Senate Rackets Committee when John Kennedy became President of the United States and he appointed his brother, um, uh, Bob Kennedy, who was chief counsel of the committee, uh, to, um, as attorney general. John Kennedy was a member of the Senate Rackets Committee. He was a John Kennedy was a, was a junior senator from Massachusetts. He sat on the committee, on the Senate Rackets Committee. His brother, Bob Kennedy, was chief counsel of the committee. Um, when John Kennedy ran and won as, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for President of the United States in November of 1960, his campaign manager was his brother, Bobby Kennedy, whom he appointed as attorney general. Um, and, and who took over that position uh, in, in January of 1961 when his brother was inaugurated as president. What do you, th what do you think? <clears throat> do you think there was an element <clears throat> of what I said about the Hoff law? Even when they're debating in the, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, hearings, I mean, it's different than what the rest of the options. <coughs> it's like our Hoffa is really disdain is every bit as disdainful of the as the committee is of him, he is of RFK. Um yeah, I mean Hoffa was Hoffa saw Bobby Kennedy as doing everything he could to bring him down. J uh, Bobby Kennedy thought that Jimmy Hoffa was an enemy of Orthodox society. He believed that that with, with Hoffa having the ability to shut down this country with his uh, control over the trucking union, that he was a national security threat. And he believed that Hoffa's association with organized crime just quadrupled the threat to this country. Consequently, Jimmy Hoffa was a person who had to be stopped. So when Bobby Kennedy became attorney general, he had a hit list of organized crime figures and their associates whom he had targeted for prosecution. And number one on that hit list was Jimmy Hoffa. Okay, let's move into the round of trials that led to Hoffa's uh, incarceration. So there was a fairly kind of simple kind of manipulating the books kind of case, the fleet test case that he ends up getting acquitted of. And then a juror contacts and says, I was born. Um, Kennedy managed, I'm sorry. Want to restart? Well, all big unions, uh, just like big business, they're corrupt. Our government's corrupt. What are you going to do? It's, it's the way the country is. At least it's free. We don't have communist control here anyways. Jimmy Hoffa's wife, Jo, waits for her husband. It's the day before Christmas, 1971, and President Nixon has commuted Jimmy's 13-year sentence. No, I believe it. No, I believe it. How's it feel, Mr. Oliver? Oh, I wonderful. Very good indeed. Hello, just straight away. Will Jimmy run again for president of the Teamsters? Will 
after being uh, 40 years in the labor union operation of the Teamsters Union. However, I do not intend to break the conditions that will be established and I'll work from the within to see what can be done about it. He took over the union in the mid-1950s and made it the biggest one in the world. But the charges of arch enemy Bobby Kennedy finally ran out of court appeals and Hoffa went to jail. And then it happens. My father, James R. Hoffa, has been missing for some 32 hours.